Representative Rembis, you have the floor, madam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, once again, um, unfortunately, we find ourselves with another one of the 31 nominees that we have to vote for. I mean, after a while, this almost becomes, in my humble opinion, disrespectful to the nominees. This is a situation where we should all be rejoicing and looking at their qualifications and supporting them on the adventure of, for many of these individuals, their dream of wanting to give back and serve the state of Connecticut in a capacity as a jurist serving the state of Connecticut and its people. But instead, what we have to do is once again remind everyone here in the chamber that we have no actual information that we have a need for 31 judges in the state of Connecticut. We have no information that we have the funding for 31 judges and their support staff in order to conduct the jobs that we're asking these individuals to take on. I don't want to oversimplify this, but these are the same conversations I have with my three-year-old. When we go to the store and she asks me to purchase something, and if it's something she already has, I say, honey, you already have this at home. You don't need this. And I remind her that she already has it at home. She actually understands that. So she doesn't ask again. There's other times that that conversation is slightly different. When asked for something, I may not have the money on me. So I simply say, honey, mommy doesn't have money at this time. She understands that and says, okay, mommy. Here we are asking to vote on nominees, 31. We don't need and we have no money for. It's a mandate. You can paint it in any way, shape you'd like. It's a mandate. It's a mandate on the residents of the state of Connecticut. I can't support this mandate, Mr. Speaker.